Hi, I'm the Grow Boss. I run a hydroponic store, write the grow book and equipment guide, and help thousands of growers get started doing it. Which is why you can trust me when I tell you, even the pros have questions about bugs. Which bug is it? And what do I use to get rid of it? So let's start there. Let's make sure you have spider mites first, because SNS-217 is for spider mites, and SNS-203 kills everything else. So let's make sure that you have spider mites first, because you want to make sure that you get the right product. Spray spider mites with the wrong product, and it doesn't help. Okay, so here's how spider mites work. They start by biting the individual cells on your leaf. That cell dies. As the spider mite reproduces and more spider mites attack the plant, more cells get bit. Eventually, the plant is under so much stress that she releases a hormone. That's what the mites were actually after, that response hormone. And once that response hormone hits, they start producing webbing. But the math actually works like this. If you have one female spider mite, she'll produce 12 eggs a day, and they'll all be female if there's no male mite to fertilize them. That means in 48 hours, there'll be 13 females producing 12 eggs a day that are female. And suddenly you can see how you go from one spider mite to a million in just a few days. And check out the 20 week garden tracker because it'll tell you the same thing. You gotta spray once a month preventatively with all natural SNS 217 to kill spider mites and once a month with all natural 203 to kill everything else. And you do that because you're hoping to catch a problem before it starts. Remember, the better you take care of your plants now, the less you have to sacrifice to the yield gods later. A lot of customers also come to the store and mistake thrip damage for spider mite damage. So let's talk about that. Because thrips leave gray spots with black dots that smear when you touch them. And if you use a loop to carefully inspect the gray spots, you would see that the thrips eat the waxy cuticle off the surface of the leaf. And that's why it doesn't reflect light the same way as the rest of the leaf. And the spots look gray. The black dots, they're poop though, so wash your hands. Spider mites leave yellow dots. Spider mites bite the cell, each individual cell, on a leaf. And over the next few days, as that cell dies, it turns yellow. The spider mites have already moved on, so they're not where the yellow dots are. They're off somewhere else. I also want you to notice that spider mites tend to cluster around the main leaf vein, so usually you'll see the first damage show up down that central vein. Thrips are a little more random, but here's a leaf where you can see the spider mite dots in the central vein and the thrip damage around the outside, and that's really important because if you get one bug, the chances of you having more than one bug go up quick. And now that you know all natural SNS 217 is for spider mites and all natural SNS 203 is for everything else, check this pop quiz. Yellow spots, what is it? And what do you have to do to get rid of it? Gray spots with black dots, what is it? And what are those black dots again? If you didn't know the answer to those, then maybe you should get my No More Grow More Fact Cards. And now that we're sure it's spider mites, and now that we're sure we want SNS 217, we got a plan. So let's go ahead and shape the plan up and get ready to spray her, because I'm going to show you how to get rid of them next. Let's start at the bottom, because bugs come from the bottom up, and usually the sickest leaves are at the bottom. Then we just kind of thin and trim as we go, taking away all of the foliage that we don't want. Sometimes it helps to turn the plant and start on a new part to give you a new perspective and then come back to what you were doing. And finally, there's a couple of things I want you to consider with respect to how much leaf you pull off the plant. Because if you're in veg and the problem's not bad, you only need to take off the leaves where the bugs are. But if you're in veg and the problem is bad, take off as many leaves as possible and you don't have to worry about it because you can just let her veg for another week or two and she'll grow them back. 
But if you're in flower, you're going to want to be extra careful about what leaves you pull off because she's not going to have the chance to grow them back. And if you've got mites, you're going to want to soak the whole plant, of course, but you're really going to want to focus on the underside of the leaf because that's where they live. I'll tell you something else that people come to my store are always asking me. What's the perfect humidity? And there is no right answer for that. And I'll tell you why. Because spider mites like it dry. They're insects. They breathe through their skin. Mold and mildew though, well, that likes it wet. That's why there is no perfect temperature. There is no perfect humidity. Because keeping it high and wet on some days prevents spider mites. Keeping it dry on other days prevents mold. Each is the natural checks and balance to the other. So there is no perfect temperature and there is no perfect humidity. And bugs are seasonal, so I always stock up on 217 before summer. And even though you watch my videos, and you buy my books and my No More Grow More Fat cards, you still may want any more information. And if you do, you can always get in contact with me through my helpline. Trust me, I know how much you've got invested in this already. Call before you quit.